The new T-Rex 6 from IK Multimedia has over 60 plugins that you can use in your door or in their new mastering console. That's way too much to talk about in one video. So today I'm just going to focus on what's new in T-Rex 6. This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Perhaps like you, I've got thousands of plugins on my system, but I use about, I don't know, 15 of them. Now amongst my chosen few, T-Racks make up a pretty large proportion. They've got plugins which are emulations of classic hardware, but they've also got their own creations, which I really love as well. Now in terms of new plugins, let's start off with a plugin for the plugins. Something new to this version is the actual T-Rax plugin. Everything you can see on the screen at the moment is one single plugin inserted into a vocal channel in my door. And I can use this to build up fairly complex effects chains, which I can reuse again later. Now, don't panic. If you don't like to use this kind of thing, you can still use t rex plugins in the usual way in your door. But you may find this a workflow advantage. So let's see it in action. I may want to start off, for example, with a channel strip. So I'll grab this. SSL style channel strip. I'll just drop it down the bottom there and I may want to follow up with a de-esser. So I'll scroll down, grab this de -esser, drop that in there. And then finally, I may want to use a reverb. So I'm going to filter out some of these by clicking on reverb at the top. So I'm only seeing reverb modules and I'll grab this whole one and I'll drag that over to finish off my chain. Now when I switch off my module list, of course, I can go into these individual modules and I can make whatever changes I need need to make. And of course, as you'd expect, you can grab them at the bottom and change the order of them as well. And then finally, when you're happy with what you've got, you may want to save it as a preset. Now, I've already done that, and it's an opportunity to show something else which is new, which is the preset browser. So I'll click at the top here for my presets. The preset browser appears and essentially this is just a way of keeping your presets well organized into things like categories and also enables you to sort of filter them so you can easily find them. So I've got my vocal basic preset here. I'll click on that and that loads up into the plugin down here. And you can see I've made a vocal chain from a Neve style uh, EQ here. I have a 1176 style compressor, an LA-2A style compressor, a DS as I did before. And then finally I finished off with a plate reverb. So I'm just gonna play that so you can hear how all of that sounds on my vocal. And before I do, just take note of what are black lines currently at the moment here on the interface. These are meters and I reckon they're quite handy. Let's have a listen. Another day Another change in point of view Another's pray If they might not make it through and actually, when you're using especially analog style plugins, those meters can be quite handy for just seeing what's happening to your single as your signal as it works through the chain in terms of its gain. And sometimes you want to make sure you've got enough gain going into analog style plugins to get those sort of saturation effects that you may be after. OK, so I'm fairly happy with that, but I'd like to experiment with using a side chain. Now, before I do that, I'm going to make a backup of this chain chain by going up to the top here and you can see there's different sort of versions that you've got available here a b c d i'm going to click on the copy button and then i'm just going to press the b button so my current setup is copied to version b then i'm going to create my side chain so i'll just go to my modules list i'm going to go for a 1176 star compressor again and i'll just drag that down here and then you can see that it branches off from the input here to that 76 but I want to change the output, so I'll drag that across like so. I actually want to make sure that it, it goes to the end of the chain there. So I've got a basic side chain set up there. And of course, I would go in and make my changes to this 1176. And when I'm happy with it, I may want to compare it to my previous version. And I could easily do that at the top there by swapping between A and B like so. So I can easily compare my different chain versions. 
And that makes life kind of really a lot easier in many, many circumstances, so long as you're kind of in the T-Rex ecosystem, if you like. Now, it may be that you've got a whole bunch of modules in here and plugins on your system that you don't use very much. And to get rid of some of them, at least temporarily, you can use something called the Modules Manager. The Modules Manager is something that I wish other companies would implement as well. Put simply, you can go through your list of plugins, and if you find one that you don't use very often, you can simply select the button next to it and switch it off. And once you do that, it's no longer going to appear in places like the T-Rex plugin or in your door, making finding things so much easier. The new mastering console is a really powerful tool, whether you're mastering individual tracks or EPs or LPs. In the current view, you can see that I've got four tracks lined up for my sort of test EP here, and I'm in the waveform view. So in this view, you can easily do things like sort of trim the ends of your tracks like so to get rid of the empty space, or you may want to do things like sort of fade ins and fade outs as well. You've also got the chain view, and this is where you'll set up your individual modules for your mastering. And as you can see, each of my songs here has a different chain view, so you don't have to apply these chains to every single song at the same time. However, if you did want to do that, you can go to the master bus view, and anything you put in here is going to be applied to all of the songs in your project. Now, one of the nice things they give you here is some good metering. If we open up the metering view here, you can see it here. I'll just play a song so you can see it in action. Don't turn the light on. Of course, that's crucial for mastering, and you can customize this to your needs, including switching, you know, certain types of metering on and off as well. Now, when you finally finished your project you'll want to assemble it ready for release and you can do that in the assembly view so in here you can see all of your tracks i'll just zoom out so we can see all four of them you can do things like naming your album or your ep you can rename the tracks here set up some metadata and things and then finally export it ready for release now if we go back to the first song that i've got in my ep here you can see this has got a new plugin in it called master match x so master match x is one of eight new plugins in T-Rex 6 and it's really all about using reference material to get a head start with your song. Now good reference material is going to be a song in a similar genre to yours with a similar kind of lineup of instruments as well and it's a good idea to use well-produced commercial music. Now if you don't have a particular reference track in mind then you can just simply choose from one of the genres that we can see on the screen here and we'll do that in a moment. But let's start off by actually using a reference track. So I'm going to go to Load Reference, and then I'm just going to drag in an MP3 of a song from my other screen, drop it there, and right away it's analyzed it, and it's ready to compare it to our song. Now, the main thing you want to do here is make sure that you choose one of the louder or more full parts of your song. So I'm going to use the end chorus of this song, which currently sounds like this. And all I need to do is actually click on Analyze, like so, play my song. And then once I've done that, click on Match again. Now, I would probably play a much longer section than that to give it something better to work with, but this is fine for demonstration purposes. So let's see how this song sounds now. Now, you may be happy with that result right away, but you can use these rather simple controls to adjust it. So, for example, you may want to adjust the EQ matching. You can see the graphic representation of it at the top there changing and slightly adjust the sound of it. Let's have a listen to that. Yeah. 
you know, he may even want to just change things like the actual style. So over here, I could just make it hard, balanced, or gentle. Let's have a listen to those three. And your memory, and your Now, if you want to adjust the actual loudness of this, you'd probably go for the limiter section here. And then as you're playing it, you might keep an eye on some of the values in the metering over here to get it to your target. Now, as I mentioned, you don't have to use a reference track. You could just choose a genre. So let's try that. I'll go to reanalyze up here and I'll go to choose from list and let's try songwriter. That's probably suitable for this one. And again, I'll click on analyze and play my track and I'd probably play it for the whole chorus under normal circumstances but let's have, let's have a listen to the difference with this one really like that it's a lot weightier probably more like the kind of thing that I was going for so this is a very very powerful tool and pretty easy to use as you can see now in a moment we're going to take a look at another seven brand new plugins which come with T-Rex 6 and I've got to tell you a few of them I'm going to be using right away in my productions before we take a look at them though I want to remind you if you're releasing your music to places like Spotify Amazon Google Play etc Check out the VIP link in the description down below for our sponsor, DistroKid. If you use that link, you'll get 7% off of your first year of membership. One of the new plugins we get is the Dual Spring. This is a lot of fun and is, of course, a spring reverb with two springs in it. But we're going to start off just by listening to Spring A on the right-hand side. Before we do that, let's have a listen to the guitar we're going to be applying it to. Sorry for my sloppy playing there. Now, if I switch it on, one of the first interesting things that you can do is change the material of the spring. Have a listen to the difference in sound as I change the material. quite significant there. you get quite a different character of course you can also use the tone knob here to change the character you can change the length of the spring here and you can also pan it I'm going to pan this all the way over to the left hand side and I've already prepared spring B on the right hand side now I can blend the two together to get a nice stereo effect <laughs> And then, of course, I'd almost certainly blend them with the dry signal. So I'll go all the way back to the dry signal and blend in my reverb sound. I rather like that but I think I need some delay as well. I love a good delay, but my needs are usually quite simple. So this one really suits me. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is drag this mix button down so that we're hearing quite an amount of our original guitar, because you kind of need that as the reference for the delay you're about to hear. Let's have a quick listen to it in its default state. Okay, so obviously I need to adjust the timing here because we're not hearing much of a delay. So I'm just going to push the timing control up and you can see visually in the middle how the left and right channels are going to be affected. Yes, let's have a listen to that. Okay, that's fine, but I probably want something a bit more musical. So I'm just going to click on the sync button over here and I'm going to set a really typical timing for delay, which is one eighth dotted timing there. Let's have a listen to that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, but it's kind of still getting mushed up in the original guitar sound. There's a few ways I can tackle that, um, but one of the main ones I'm going to do is use the ping pong mode. Now, when I do that, you're going to see in the display in the middle how it's going to affect. So the delay is going to bounce from the left to the right channel, and that's really going to separate it and give us some width. Have a listen. <laughs> Sounds nice, huh? But it's all a little bit sort of muddy now because we're hearing the low end repeated again and again in the delay. So it's really handy that we've got some filters over here. So obviously I'm going to use the high pass filter. I'm going to push it up a lot. Now, if I really wanted to hear what it was doing, I'd push the mix over so that we're only hearing the wet signal. Have a listen to this. Cool. Let's a blender again I rather like that now we can further change the character of the delay sounds with the controls at the bottom. I won't do them now. You can see what they are. Doubling, bit reduction, downsampling, clipping. You can make it all sound a little bit lo-fi with the delays, and that can be really helpful as well for kind of getting that separation in the sound from the original sound to the delayed sound. This is the new Channel Strip X. Now, I reckon Channel Strips are great for when you just want to use one plugin to get in there and just sculpt the O overall sound. It's got a few basic controls. Of course, we've got our input control. Then we've got a de-esser here, which is going to be useful for the vocals that we're going to apply this to in a moment. We've got an equalizer at the top in the middle and then a knob to sort of blend it in and out. We've got a compressor over here. We've got some transient recovery and output control and also some stereo width enhancing, which I'm not actually going to use here at the moment because I'm using this on vocals. It's not very suitable. So let me go in and get my hands dirty and then we'll do a quick before before and after afterwards. Another day, another change in point of view, another's pray. They fear they might not make it through. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, cause I'm with you. Another day. Another change in point of view, another's pray. If they might not make it through, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, cause I'm with you. Another day, another change in point of view, another's pray. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's do a before and after. Before. Another day. Another change in point of view. And after. Another day. Another change in point of view. Another's pray. The fear they might not. And that is Channel Strip X. This is Lo-Fi Punch. Have a listen to these drums. Okay, let's add in some Lo-Fi using this knob over here. Hmm, nice. What about Type 2? Let's try that out. Whoa. I love that, but let's go back to type one and try out some of these things down here. Noise. Wow. <laughs> Flutter. Oh, yeah. The pitch change. Now it's getting messy. Let's try this filter. Yeah, some drive. Some weird bit of compression that's lo-fi punch okay this is definitely one of my favorites this is a new multi-band saturation plugin called 
pusher and as you can see you've got four bands of saturation that you can adjust and you can adjust their frequency ranges at the top here using these sliders nice and easy now with each band you can control the amount of drive of the saturation here you've also got five different saturation algorithms to choose from at the top here then below this you've got the color control which adjusts the tone of the saturation and then if we go below that you've got three modulation envelope controls here one is for the color knob above one is for drive and the other one is for the band's level and you can link some of these together like so or you can use them individually or you can switch them off and on as you like now i'm going to apply this to those drums we were listening to a moment ago i'm going to use one of their presets which is called snare and hat enhancer and you can probably imagine what it's going to do let's start off with the plugin bypass and then i'll switch it on and you'll definitely hear and see the difference I really like that right away. I think that can be useful to me. Now, it could be used on a source like this. I even think you could use this subtly on mastering as well. Definitely one to check out. This plugin, one is not one of the new plugins in the collection it's one of the older ones but it does relate to one of the new plugins you'll see why in a moment but before i get into that i just want to tell you a quick story about this plugin recently i released a song and quite a number of people commented on the mastering or the quality of the mastering and this was my secret weapon and to be honest it only took about sort of 10 minutes to create that master and one of the things i love about this plugin is you have these very simple controls here which have labels which really pretty much tell you what they're going to do and you just use your ears and you adjust those parameters rather than having a whole chain of different plugins and i rather like that simple approach sometimes especially if i'm in a hurry so how does this relate to one of the new plugins well you'll see here this new plugin base one has a very similar design if i flick between the two you can see they've pretty much stolen the idea from one and applied it to this one which is base one and as you can imagine this relates to low or bass frequencies now with this particular plugin rather than tell you what each of these knobs does i'm just going to play my track i'm not going to isolate the bass okay i'm going to play the whole track or all of the parts of the track that is and i'm just going to adjust some of these parameters so you can hear what they're doing Another day, another change in point of view. When others pray, they fear they might not make it through. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid because I'm with you. I walk along. Come and gently hold my hand Why I'm lost You got me through this changing land Despite the cost Just because you understand In your memory This is filter fusion a filtering processor now i must admit i don't use this kind of processor very often at all but i've rather enjoyed trying this one out it's pretty simple in the middle here you've got your basic filtering controls and you've got five different types of filter that you can choose from there then at the bottom we've got three different kinds of processes going on over here an envelope follower a step sequencer and an lfo and all of those three can be blended using this kind of joystick control up here on the right hand side so let's give this a test run i'm going to start 
start off with the plugin bypassed and then when I switch it on I'm going to have this joystick all the way over so we're only hearing the envelope follow but first of all let's hear our lovely DX7 style piano and then I'll switch the plugin on to hear the envelope follower. Okay, let's move to the step sequencer. And then the LFO. Okay, let's blend them all together. getting there let's try the basic filtering add a bit of drive and let's make it wider Fun, eh? Now, T Rex 6 comes in various different shapes and sizes depending on your budget and what you want, ranging all the way from a free version up to the max version, which I was using in today's video. And by the way, I'm not getting paid by IK Multimedia, nor will I make any money if you choose to follow the links in the description down below and buy one of those products. I genuinely will continue to be using some of these plugins in my production productions and I'm definitely going to make use of some of the new ones. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Mike and I hope you're well.